All right. So today we're going to be adding on the details for this jellyfish pattern. This jellyfish pattern will be available in my Etsy shop as soon as I get pattern testers to test it out for me. I will link it down below as soon as it is ready. But for now, we're going to talk about how to add the embroidered details on top of your jellyfish. So for this, you're going to need at least one yarn needle. Typically, if I'm using a thinner yarn, then I will use the smaller yarn needle. And you're going to need whatever skein, I just threw the yarn ball over there. You're going to need whatever skein is your secondary color. Um, for this one, it's white. Or if you're doing the jellyfish primarily in one color and you want something to pop, whatever that color is. So I've got my color here and I'm going to go with white. You're actually going to want to use quite a bit of yarn. I don't really have a specific measurement. I do not prepare for things like that. Um, but it's always better to have extra on your needle than less. Because if you have extra, you can always trim it and save them for later. And if you have less than what you need, then it's harder to attach threads. So we're just going to cut off a really, really long thing. Like, this is pretty long. Um, in measurements of feet, I would say that this is probably about four, four foot or so. So for this particular pattern, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a circle here and then I'm going to be doing a floral type pattern around it. Since I'm doing white, I'll be using this white gel marker to kind of outline the shape that I want. But before that, since I know that I want to have a circle here kind of near the center, I'm just going to work along right there with my stitches. As you can see, in between each stitches, there's that little divot there. That's where I'm going to be working my first inner circle. All right, so I'm using the chain stitch for embroidery. And what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be pulling it mostly close like that. Then we're going to be going at it like this. And when I loop, so what I'm doing here is I'm just taking that first chain that I went under and I'm going back under it. And when you go back under it, before you pull it all the way through, when you've got this little bit of loop here, let me just move that out of the way. You just take your needle and pull it through like this. So now you've got your first chain and I'm going to leave this tail as is for now. We will be working it in at the end. So from there, you're going to be doing the same thing. You're going to take the loop that you already made, feed your needle through, and you're going to go up under your next stitch. And then to make things easier, usually as I'm pulling it through, I just go ahead and loop it over like that. So my yarn has gone through the loop and then you just pull it tight. You don't want it to be completely taut. You do want some leeway in there. And then if you have anything that you don't like, you can always just kind of um, move your stitches, so to speak, using your needle. And I'm just gonna keep doing that 
all the way around. Needle through the loop, needle, let me see here, yes, needle through the loop, needle under the stitch, needle through new loop, and pull taut. Well, almost taut. And that's kind of the look you're going to have. So one more time. Needle through old loop. Needle under stitch. Needle through new loop. And pull thought. And this is just called the simple chain stitch when it comes to embroidery. So if you would like a different tutorial, you'll just look up chain stitch embroidery. There are definitely other people who have explained it a lot clearer than I have. So we're just gonna work this all the way around. And then once I've done that, I will come back to where we are. Alrighty, we are at the final stitch. So what I'm going to do is again, do that well through the original loop, under the stitch, and then through the new loop. And after we pull this one taut, what we're going to do instead And sometimes the yarn gets tangled up. It's okay, it happens. Usually what I do when it gets a little tangled up is I just take the needle and pull it out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take it and I'm not gonna put it back through the loop. Instead, I'm going to just push it back down to where I initially had it and I'm going to pull it through this top here and I'm just going to pull all the way through. Again, fixing the stitch where it needs to be fixed. And then for now, I'm going to take my yarn off of that particular strand and I'm going to put it back on that long tail that we left. Now with this, I'm going to take it and go through here. And then I'm going to also send this one up through the top. And then after adjusting it some, that's what it's gonna look like. From this point, I'm simply going to tie a tight knot here. I like to do um, at least three times, sometimes even four. Then we're going to re-thread it through the needle, poke it back through the entrance hole, and really it doesn't matter where you decide to feed it out because the knot is going to be inside and you can just trim off the excess. Nice and easy. Now, for this other tail, we're actually not going to do that though. We're going to do something similar, but not quite. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-thread that just so I have it ready. And then I'm gonna sit it to the side for a second. And this is where you're gonna to wanna to take, well, if you feel like you need to take um, a pin or something, you can use a washable marker, you could use a pin of the same color of the thread you're using if you'd like it to blend better. It's really up to you. But I'm gonna take this white marker here and I want my jellyfish to have kind of 
I want it to kind of look like a four leaf clover around. Um, kind of like, what are they called? The moon jellyfishes, I think is what they're called, moon jellyfish. So I'm just gonna, I don't even know if it'll show up on camera here. I don't think it's really showing up on camera. You can't hardly tell, which is fine. You just need some kind of guidance to know what you're doing. And they also make washable fabric markers. That would be excellent for this. But I'm just gonna go around and mark out my petals, so to speak. And I apologize, I know it's probably not showing up that well, if at all, on camera. Um, but it's okay. You know? And if your petals are uneven, that's fine. Mine are always uneven, even though I draw them out. But I think it adds more realism to it because there's not, jellyfish are not going to be the same every single time. So, after you've got your outline, and I don't know how well you can see it on camera, probably not at all because my camera is trash. But after you've made your outline, you're going to take your thread, feed it back through that entrance hole. It's um, where you have your original six single crochet. And you're going to go into the bend where one of your petals meet, or where your design meets if you're going the flower route. And you're just going to pull that all the way through. And then you're going to keep doing the same thing that you were doing up here down here following your lines. So. Through the old loop, under the stitch, through the new loop, pull. And then again, adjusting as you see fit. I am going to do the rest of this and then I'm going to come back at the bend so I can show you how I do my bend. And we will return in a minute. Okay, so we have our first kind of petal of sorts done. So to do the sharp curve is actually pretty simple. Instead of doing a slow angle kind of like here, we're just gonna take a sharp curve. Oops, there we go ultimately the same pattern, just changing the direction. And as you can see, I've already run out of quite a bit of yarn and that's why I said that it is very important to make sure that you use plenty of yarn on your, here we go, use plenty of yarn on your needle. Because it runs out pretty quick with this stitch. Um, if you want to go for a different look, I would also recommend the backhand stitch. It's not that bad for this, or really any stitch that creates a sort of line that you could use to outline whatever it is you wish to create. Um, and this is just in general. The, the chain stitch is just in general one of my favorite embroidery stitches to use when it comes to making patterns on my crochet items because it's super convenient how you can just 
line up the chains with your stitches. So. I'm just going to go ahead and finish this and then I will come back and show you how to finish the jellyfish pattern itself as well as show you the finished product. All right, so here I have is that my neighbor's dog barking? Sorry if you hear my neighbor's dog barking in the background. Um, but here, I am not quite finished yet. I only have this amount to do, but I actually didn't cut off enough yarn. If you do this, it's a bit more complicated than if you had just gotten the correct amount from the start, but that's okay. I mess up regularly. It's fine. You have one of two options. You can either tie the pieces together and hope that the knot falls when it's under the stitch, or you can kind of do like what we did when you were first starting the stitch. Here, we're gonna... Should not have unthreaded that. So I'm just gonna take this one, push it up through the top. This is a nice method in my opinion because it ends up looking nice. Just kind of separate the stitches there a little bit. All right. So after that, you're going to restart and re-thread your new piece. And you're going to start with your old loop. And basically, once again, you're just going to do the same thing that you were doing before. Oh, I actually did that wrong. There we go. There we go. You're going to want to start from not in your stitch, but from outside of your stitch. That was a slip up. Can you tell that I am mostly ad-libbing this video? Get out of my way, strap. There we go. Once again, I'm going to leave that out because I'm just going to bring it up to the top when I finish it. I'm a little picky about my stitches, which is why I keep picking at them. Um, go. This way, there we go. And really, you can use the chain stitch for several different patterns. Um, I don't want to reveal what it is just yet, um, but I do have a sweet new jellyfish pattern that, well, a sweet new jellyfish that will be going up in the store as soon as I get finished with making the product. Right now I've only got two and I would like to have at least 10 before product launch. But let's just say it is Halloween themed. Because there's not enough Halloween themed stuff out there. I don't care if it's only August. It is never too early to celebrate Halloween. And if people can start celebrating Christmas and having Christmas decorations out in October, then I can start celebrating Halloween and having Halloween decorations out in August. I 
really hope I'm on camera for most of this stuff. <laughs> We're almost at the final stitch down. I'm gonna probably get copyright struck. <laughs> So as you could tell, hopefully, I, when finishing this last one, I just led my yarn piece up directly into my first loop. And then similarly how I did in the past, I'm once again just going to take this and put it up there. Pick up the stitches so it seems a little looser. There we go. Going to also feed this one in there. If I can properly thread it. Now I'm going to tie all three of them together. And this shortest one here, the string should get pulled in when I pull the other through. That, that string should disappear in with the knot. If it doesn't, I will show you a trick to deal with that as well. Actually, it looks like both of them are pretty short here. So one trick you can do is just taking the end of your needle and just poking whatever you don't want sticking up down. Sometimes I also spin it around a little bit and then I stab that down. Kind of like um, needle felting if you've ever done needing, needle felting. I cannot talk today. There we go. And then once more. From here you can do one of two. Oh, from here you can do one of two things. If you would like a loop to make a hanger, you can simply figure out how long you want your hanger to be, tie a knot there, and then sew your string down through. I would recommend sewing it straight through the bottom and then tying a knot somewhere around here so you can hide the knot in the body. But I am not going for a hanger jellyfish. So I'm just going to once again So I'm just going to, once again, take this and feed it through randomly. And trim off the yeah. excess. And this is what it looks like. It's all wonky. That's because I drew it wonky. <laughs> I probably could have made this pedal a little bit wider and it probably would have fixed that problem. But hey, it adds to the charm. And if you want yours to be perfect, you can take all the time you need to fix it. You can always go back and redo stitches. I just, I don't know. I think it looks cute a little wonky. Also, as far as the tentacles go, if you want your tentacles to look a little bit longer, you just grab them at the base, grab them at the tip, and pool. So yeah, 
that was my little jellyfish tutorial on how to get the flower top here and if you don't want to do the circle you don't have to do the circle either I just think it's a cute detail um, this is the finished product there will be patterns available and there will be jellyfish themselves available coming soon